Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to talk about the typical human rib. We're going to talk about the various parts of it. And then we're going to talk about how the rib actually articulates, generally speaking, with the vertebra. Um, there are going to be some exceptions to these articulations, and we're going to cover those in a future video. So just understand that this is generally how they're going to attach, but the exceptions we'll actually be covering in one of the future videos. Okay. So typical human rib. Well, humans have 24 ribs. That's because we have 12 pairs of ribs. Okay. We have 12 thoracic vertebrae, T1 through T12, and generally speaking, each one is going to have its own rib. Okay? 12 pairs of ribs, 12 on the left, 12 on the right. Now, we have two ends of the rib. We have one end that's going to articulate with the vertebra posteriorly, and another end that potentially is going to articulate in some way anteriorly with the sternum. Again, there are two ribs, ribs 11 and 12, that do not articulate with the sternum anteriorly. Okay? Ribs 1 through 10, they articulate with the sternum whether it's directly or indirectly, and we'll talk about those ex uh, exceptions again in the next video. But when we look at the posterior part of the rib, the posterior attachment on the vertebra, that's the head of the rib. Okay, And the head of the rib is actually going to have these two smaller articular facets. Okay, This is not one large articular facet. We have this one articular facet up here and one down here. And notice there's this crest of the head of the rib, this little crest right here, that separates these two articular facets. We'll talk about why that's important on the next slide. But this is the head of the rib. And we have the neck of the rib right here that separates the head from the tubercle of the rib. Now the tubercle has two parts. It has a non-articular part. This part we're going to see later on in the next video actually attaches to several ligaments. And then we have the articular facet of the tubercle. Okay, We're actually going to look at on the next slide how the tubercle attaches to the vertebra and it's going to attach differently than the head of the rib. If we follow past the tubercle, we're going to get to something called the angle of the ribs. The angle of the rib is really important because it's going to provide a marker for which muscles are innervated by ventral or dorsal primary rami okay, from the spinal cord. And if that doesn't make a lot of sense, we'll cover that in a future video. But this is the angle of the rib. If we look on the inferior aspect of the rib, we see this groove that kind of goes pretty much around the whole length right here. This groove is going to be important for providing a site where we're going to see the intercostal nerves and blood vessels run along the rib in the intercostal spaces. Those are spaces between the ribs. And this over here is going to be the anterior attachment. It's going to have hyaline cartilage on it, a type of cartilage we call costal cartilage. And this costal cartilage we can see here can attach on the sternum, or for ribs 8, 9, and 10, it can actually attach on other costal cartilages. All right? Cover that in the next video. So those are the parts of a typical human rib. Now, in terms of what each of these specifically connect to, we need to take a look at this picture right here. So this part over here, this is the head of the rib, and over here, this is the tubercle of the rib. Okay? And we're looking specifically at the portion of the rib that articulates with the vertebra. Okay? So here's two vertebral bodies. If we look at the vertebral body, we're going to see that they have what are called demifacets. Most of the vertebra have what we call demifacets instead of full costal facets. Demi is a term that means half, okay? or partial, or part. We look at the head of this rib. Notice it does not articulate with only one vertebra. It articulates with the vertebra above, specifically the body above, and the body below. So if we look at this facet right here, it's a demifacet because it's only half of the articulation with the head of this rib. So this would be the inferior costal demifacet of the vertebra above. This one is the superior costal demifacet of the vertebra below. And again, they are demifacets because they are half of the articulation. Demi means half or partial. So here's half of the articulation with the rib. Here's the other half. 
Okay, this one down here would be the inferior costal demi facet, and it would be half of the articulation with the rib right here that's not shown. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. If we had a situation where there was just a costal facet, not a costal demi facet, costal facet refers to the articulation is only with one vertebra. It's not shared between two. A good example of that would be the transverse costal facet. Here's one right here. Here's a second one right here that's articulating with the tubercle of this rib. Notice this tubercle of the rib is not articulating with multiple transverse costal facets. It's just this one. And so that makes it a full facet, not a demi facet. Now, when we're looking at the articulation between the tubercle of the rib and the transverse costal facet, this forms a joint called the costotransverse joint. So this is where the tubercle of the rib articulates with the transverse costal facet on the vertebra's transverse process. This is a synovial joint. Then we have this one right here, which is where the head of the rib is going to articulate with these two demi facets. In general, anytime we have this where the rib's head articulates with the bodies or body or the vertebra, this is called the costovertebral joint, where the head of the rib articulates with the inferior costal demi facet above and the superior costal demi facet below. That's the costovertebral joint, and that is also a synovial joint. Both of these are synovial joints. Okay. Also, one thing that's important to note about all these ribs attaching here is the presence of these ribs is an important factor that actually constrains the range of motion of the thoracic vertebrae. So these ribs kind of get in the way of movement of the thoracic region of the spine, and that actually makes the thoracic region very low mobility. Um, in fact, lumbar is more mobile, and the cervical is the most mobile, much more mobile than the thoracic region of the spine. Okay. Now, one other thing I wanted to talk about before I conclude this video is Remember I mentioned that the head of these ribs that articulate with the uh, bodies, they have two articular facets here, two smaller ones, that are separated by the crest on the head of this rib. Does it make sense now why there's two parts of these? It's because this one up here is going to articulate with the inferior costal demi facet above, and then this part right here is going to articulate with the superior costal demi facet of the vertebra below. And so that's why most ribs are going to have two smaller separate articular facets. What we're going to see in a future video is that ribs 11 and 12, they articulate actually with complete costal facets on T11 and T12. And so they are not demi facets. There is one very large singular articular fat costal facet on T11 and same thing on T12. And so if we were actually to look at the head of the ribs 11 and 12, they would not have two separate smaller articular facets right here. It'd be one complete large one because on T11 and T12, these vertebra have a complete singular large costal facet. Okay? But in general, most of the vertebra, particularly 2 through 10, are going to have uh, these demi facets that are shared uh, between the vertebra above and the vertebra below. And so the head of the rib is going to have a structure that actually reflects that. So one part of it binds to uh, the costal demi facet above, and one binds to the costal demi facet below. Okay? So, Hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the general joints that we have here between the ribs and the vertebra. In the next video, we're going to talk in detail about the ligaments that stabilize these joints. And then after that, we'll go into the joints that these ribs have with the sternum. Right? Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.